Welcome to the Insomnia Project. Sit back, relax, and listen as we have a calm conversation about mundane things to hopefully help you find your way to sleep. I'm your host, Marco Timpano. I'm Amanda Barker. Amanda, we haven't recorded for a while because I haven't been feeling very well. So So Marco was ill and I didn't want to share. This is a small, modest booth and we share air in here. So we took precautions and you slept in the spare room, which I'm sure was a real fun time for you. Oh yeah. It's always (laughs) nice to sleep in the spare room because you get to see or feel what your guests go through. And what are our guests going through? Well, I think they have a very comfortable bed with a yeah. very comfortable uh, situation set up there. There's a great TV in there. Yeah, so. I, I don't love the pillows that are in there. I'll say that much. Okay, but good to know. But otherwise, I think everything's fine. Okay. Um, you don't want it too comfortable for your guests or they'll mm-hmm. stay longer. Fair enough. <laughs> we Our guests are the ones who listen to this podcast. It's true. It's <laughs> My true. My family, so... <laughs> Yes, please. We do want it comfortable for you. Please don't. But not too comfortable. And it now has a nice TV in there. It's true. For those who who want that. Um, We talked about our bed last time. Mm -hmm. And I'm enjoying it. Good. I'm just going to say. Yeah. I'm really enjoying it. So far, so good. Knock on wood. Um, So, yeah, we we haven't recorded. So, sorry for the delay Mm. on that. But you're feeling better now. I'm feeling better now. I'm sharing the air with you now. You're sharing the air with me now. Our guests have a TV now and in they, the spare room. They can share the air with us too. And the cable. Mm-hmm. And um, we just had a nice late August lunch. Oh, Amanda, you made such a wonderful lunch now. Simplest thing ever. Listeners, if you are like me, I'm in constant search of the perfect watermelon and I can never find it. I always pick one that's over or under. Like It's Marco's two. epic search. And all I want is a perfectly ripe watermelon. It's and true. all I get is, usually I get ones that are overripe. Oh, really? Yeah. And and on the odd time, I'll get underripe, but I tend to get overripe, which I don't love at all. And I'm wondering if our listeners have any tips with regards to uh, watermelon we, we selection. We bang on the fruit. We listen to it. We've done all that. We look at the shape. We look at the color. Mm-hmm. Nothing seems to get us there. Mm. But this one, I think, was underripe, right? This one was under, yes. Which, for me, makes a perfect watermelon salad. It's true. So if you have the same dilemma as me where it's like, I can't really eat these watermelons with the joy that I want to, Amanda can. Amanda has, for me, made a salad that makes me very joyful. I mean, I think we've talked about it before. My watermelon drama comes from the fact that you buy these watermelons. Here we go. I am not a food waster. I try not to be. I try to be pretty frugal and also respectful of all the food that we bring into this home. And so, you know, you you cut a slice of watermelon, you cut the thing in half, have a slice, cry in disappointment. It's and true. then the rest of it I'm left to contend with. And they are big and they take up a lot of space. And you have to put them in the fridge really because otherwise it becomes Little festa de fruit fly. Yeah, so, fruit fly palace. Yeah. yeah. So in the fridge it went and it's taken up a lot of space. And so today I got on sale this week. I hit some great end of the day dairy sales, I'm happy to say, for cheese, sour cream, a few other things. And um, I had this marked down cojita cheese. I think that's how you say it, cojita. Also, yeah, sure. Mexican cheese. Anyway, fresh Mexican cheese. Oh my gosh. So good. Cut it's it a up. bit salty. A bit salty. Kind of like um, if you don't have it available in recipes, you can substitute feta for well, it. Well, feta is usually what you put with watermelon because right. of the high salt. But I actually went looking for feta and it was really expensive. And this cojita cheese was like end of day marked down. So I bought that. And uh, we have mint uh, growing up back. Um now, mind you, it's a pretty, it's a different kind of mint. I want to say that's chocolate mint, it's called. Mm, no, no I, I think it's a pretty stark, like, peppermint. It's a strong mint, that it's one. It's like an astringent mint. Yeah. So I used it sparingly. Some mald and salt, as you know. Olive oil. Some, some olive oil. E basta. That's it. And uh, with the, uh, I grilled some chicken. That was our lunch. Very so good. So mint, watermelon, the cheese, olive oil, salt. You could put pepper too. Pepper goes nice. I did put pepper. Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. We have the end of uh, like a year, maybe two years ago. A very good friend of ours gave you 
a basket for your birthday. Oh, that's true. Full of foods. And yes. there was uh, this pepper, like three different color peppercorn, pepper grinder thing in mm-hmm. it. So I have been using that for pretty much every meal. And uh, it's lasted a long time. We have a fancy peppercorn mill that we got that mm-hmm. I really like. And here's a tip. Okay, so this episode might be the peppercorn mill tip, the episode. I if you if you want to jazz up your meal, fresh ground peppercorn I think is one easy way to do so. And you need a quality pepper mill. Doesn't mean it has to be the most expensive, but I think you need the pepper mill that allows you to monitor the size of the grind mm-hmm. of the pepper. Mm-hmm. People like me prefer a coarser or thicker ground. Mm. Some people prefer very fine pepper. It's all to taste, right? So if you like fine pepper, you don't like the feel of a bit of that grit that you might get from peppercorn grindings, you'll go with a finer grind. Mm. Invest in a good peppercorn mill. (laughs) Pepper mill, I believe they're called. I was losing. Peppercorn mill. I was losing my breath between the. the, Peppercorn (laughs) Mill. Yeah, I was losing my, I had to catch my breath there. And, and so I think that's a great investment and then have it near your food in the kitchen or where you eat, just have it nearby, give yourself a little grind. For me, it is, it makes all the difference versus, you know, pepper that you shake out of a pepper shaker. That for me is like, no. Margo, you're making me laugh so much. Why? Well, you're talking like I don't, it's going to sound rude when I, so I don't want to sound rude. Well, you got to sound rude now. My listeners are going to be like, what, <laughs> what does she have to say to him? Well, you're talking, you're talking like you, you do all the cooking or any of the cooking. I do eating. I don't. You do all the eating. Yes. Um, but, and that comes just before you eat. So. But also, I mean, I think salt and pepper, like those are the two most basic spices, like telling people to put pepper on their food. <laughs> I'm not telling people to put pepper. I'm telling them. To put fresh ground pepper. Okay. So that's the difference. Because you can shake. Restaurant style? Well, yeah. In a nice restaurant where they come over and they grind it for you. Sketch, right? Where the guy comes and he keeps grinding the pepper onto the food. Yeah. But back to the watermelon. Yes. Which had fresh ground pepper on it. Yes. Do you like watermelon? Because I know I'm a big fan. I love watermelon. Oh, you do? I wasn't sure because it made it sound like. No, it made it sound like I'm the one who's in search of perfect watermelon. You're like, I'll tolerate it. I tolerate it because, did I just really hit that T? Yes, you did, but it's fine. I tolerate it. Uh, he gave me this look that that basically told me, you just hit that T really hard. I could feel it. I tolerate it because, I love watermelon. I okay. love it. It's maybe my favorite fruit. I don't even know if you knew that. I did not know that. Clearly I thought mango was your favorite fruit. Mango? I feel like I have mango. I feel like I have episodes what are you talking where you say about? mango is your favorite fruit. No, mango is a very divisive Sorry, fruit. Sorry, papaya. Papaya oh, is okay. your favorite food. Papaya is my favorite. Which, fruit. by the way, you can put pepper on papaya. You could also do that with cojita cheese, mint, and call yourself a Amanda Barker <laughs> making I al- lunch. I also think, if I'm not mistaken, that the seeds in a papaya are very peppery, and they can be used. You say this. But I have looked it up, and I've never found that. But I think as a child, maybe you saw it and thought that. Why is it as a child? I think because a... I think that's something a child would do. Because the pep, the seeds in papaya look like peppercorns, but let me tell you, they're not. They're, if you take a papaya seed, I understand. And it you... looks like a peppercorn. No, no, I think they taste like a peppercorn too. They don't. You can, and cook... also, no one does that. Okay. But you've told me that many times about these pepper. Now you're looking it up. Might I remind you that you told the world that only Canada has bagged milk? I don't so, know if I said it quite like that. No. All right, folks. I said it's, well, anyway, I, I think I probably, well, maybe I did. I don't know. Um, and I stand by okay. <laughs> doubling down the bagged milk. Um, no, uh, I don't know. You've always told me that. I've never found anything. That has suggested that. Okay, so here, oh. on just a random search, the question becomes, can you eat papaya seeds? And are they like peppercorns? Here's what they say. Papaya seeds are edible and contain fiber, healthy fatty acids, and other beneficial compounds, including polyphenols and flavonoids. Who doesn't want a good flavonoid in their life? <laughs> and My these, favorite rapper from the 90s. <laughs> and these, and these, and these uh, components provide a health benefit. Yeah. And where does it say 
dry them out and put them in your pepper mill and see how it works out for I you. I never said put them. I don't advise <laughs> putting anything but peppercorns in your pepper I mill. Get back to my love of watermelon. Here's the thing. I have to edit this episode and you with all the letter P's in it is going to be a nightmare for me. I didn't bring it up. Okay. I really didn't bring it up. You're like, I see your watermelon and I give you papaya. So you were saying that you love watermelon. I do. My thing with watermelon is it is a massive commitment and we are two, we are but two people. There's a reason people bring watermelon to barbecues and cookouts and picnics because it's a, it's a group food because they're massive. And so, and they're messy, but they're, they're big. Two humans cannot, nor should they sit down and eat a watermelon. You know, they take up a lot of real estate in one's fridge you mean in one or sitting, counter. You mean in one sitting, two people shouldn't sit down and eat a watermelon in one sitting. In one sitting. And so then you have to keep, like, you, perfect example. You bought this watermelon. You cut your slice. I asked you, how's the watermelon? And you went, not so great. This is the story of our life every summer. And then you proceeded to leave it on the counter for a day and I was like hey do you have any plans for that watermelon yeah yeah day two finally I wrap it up I take a bunch of stuff off our shelf on the bottom shelf of the fridge moving around um you know I'm gonna be honest my La Croix or La Croix depending on who you are drinks and other things I like in the bottom shelf and now it's become um the town of watermelon in my fridge because <laughs> It's like two huge dishes of watermelon on their side wrapped in, you know, and I don't use cellophane for barely anything. I rarely, rarely, rarely use cellophane or uh, the Brits call it cling wrap or film wrap or whatever. You know what I'm talking about? Saran wrap. Cling film? Cling film, yeah. Anyway, the plastic stuff. I have it. I probably use a roll a decade, truthfully. But it's one of those things where that's probably your best bet. So I used it. And um, sometimes I use beeswax wraps for it. But I don't like washing the watermelon off of them. Anyway, and then it sits there. And then I make a salad. I go and I find the cheese and go, okay, we have mint. And that would be a good salad for lunch uh, on a day when we're both home, which doesn't happen a lot. So there you go. That's okay. the story of me and watermelon every year till infinity. Fair enough. Well, listen, I just did re read not to give uh, papaya seeds to pregnant women or children. So pepper so, grinders? But I, and I don't, I don't think you should you put them in pepper You told grinder. me this a long time ago, and I even saved the seeds thinking, great, we can use them as peppercorns. And then I looked it up and did my research, and we did not use them. I threw them out. Okay. Well, you can use them for food. Good luck. Okay. And I don't mind swallowing up. Uh, I can't wait to eat your your papaya seed lasagna or whatever. A watermelon seed now and then. Nothing wrong with, with the watermelon tree grows in your stomach. That's what they used to tell you when you're little. Okay. First of all, they don't grow on trees. Have you ever grown watermelon? Yes, I know it's a vine. Okay. It's a squash. Yeah. No, I haven't. Have you? I have. I have. I've, but they've were they good or did they also disappoint you? I think they disappointed me because here in the part of Canada we we are, hmm. your growing season is only so long, so it only grew the size of a can a large cannonball. But that's kind of what you want in a watermelon. These massive watermelons, I mean, that's an apartment sized watermelon. That's hmm. kind of what you want. How do you feel about musk melons? They're great, aren't they? They're very sweet. Yeah, they're like I love a cantaloupe. Okay, and let me tell you. Cantaloupe is the unsung hero. I'm just going to go for it. Do you know what I'm going to say? I know face. what you're going to say. Can I? Yeah, you can say it. it. Let me tell you. This is for all this the ladies. Cantaloupe is the unsung hero for UTI infections. I'm telling you. I know Everyone knows about cranberry. Yes. You feel one coming on. You go for the pure cranberry juice. You'd say to me, cantaloupe, it's so sugary. Really? Yes. But the sugar in cantaloupe attaches to the bacteria, one of the bacteria that cause UTIs. Which stands for urinary tract infection. Yeah, for those who don't know. Um, and they're a big and ongoing problem for many women. I would argue most women at some point in their lives. Men can get them too. Men can get them too. You're absolutely right. And so um, when we were in the Middle East, um, for reasons we don't have to go into, I was sort of constantly fighting one. Mm -hmm. And cantaloupe, say, having tons of cantaloupe every morning kind of saved the day for me. So, so yeah. 
I just want to say at this point, we are not doctors, nor are we nutritionists. So <laughs> please true. consult your nutritionist. This with... also coming from the people that tell you to grind papaya seeds in your pepper grinder. And from the people that um, tell you that Canada is the only bagged milk country there is when, meanwhile, the majority of the world is drinking their milk out of bags. Who knew? Things you learn. I don't know if it's the majority of the world, but there's certainly I mean, other us, places. Well, it's not the majority of the world because the majority of the world isn't drinking milk, but right. the majority of the dairy drinking world. I don't even know if that's true. I don't want to make these false claims. You seem Listen. like someone who likes to just step on the gas and make the false claim. I'm sorry. This is why I can never run for politics. <laughs> my bag milk claims and my controversial UTI recos. Well, there you go. Um, yeah, so we, we have a lovely drive in front of us. Yeah, we go do. For a little we drive go up north. In the middle of the day, which is nice to do confluence of a few reasons but mm -hmm. we both happen to have the day off that yeah. never happens so we were like oh let's let's record this podcast but uh and you're still on the mend here i'm still on the mend mm -hmm. i bought manuka honey i feel like today is just a food a food that's show. fine and amanda told me this and listeners i don't know if this is true or not well, because my british my history my british sensibility p.s i'm not british i just no, that Your I soul. Have, my soul is British. My British sensibility tells me that Amanda's wrong in this case. Oh, okay. But I'm, I made coffee today for Amanda, and I put some... Thank you. I made, put some Manuka honey in it, because Manuka honey is this honey from Australia that comes from the... the I thought it was New Zealand. Probably New Zealand as well. Okay. And it, the bees get the, get the pollen from Manuka flowers, from the Manuka tree, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Yeah, I don't and know anything about And they only bloom Manuka. for two to three, maybe five weeks. Mm -hmm. So there's a very short span. And then the honey is made from this. It supposedly has a lot of beneficial properties to it. Yeah, it's one of those like superfood honeys. Which I don't it's always... really expensive. I don't always believe, but I've had success with Manuka honey I in believe the in the power of honey. And since I'm giving uh, unsolicited non-medical advice today, I just want to do a shout out to my friend Propolis, which is not a rapper from the 90s, but an amazing throat spray made of... Um, propolis. Made of propolis. Made it's, from prop propolis with alcohol, blended so you can spray it. Yeah, which is what bees use, make naturally to seal their hives, to keep their hives free of uh, fungal and infection and bacteria. And uh, I spray it in my throat regularly. I love the taste of it. Not everyone does. But it has an earthy taste. I think we've mentioned this like on the program. Earthy honey taste, yeah. Earthy taste, earthy honey taste. I think we mentioned this on the show before. And uh, if you feel a sore throat coming on, it's a good thing to spray. Or if you're just around people that are coughing, which, you know, can happen. Right. And you've been spraying it. Or in a crowded room or whatever. Yeah. I been, spray it. You've been using it lately because I've been sick. And mm -hmm. so we usually have one in our car, one by the front mirror. And one in the bedroom so that we can... And one in every purse for me. In the and backpack, yeah. yeah. And there you go. So that and lip balm. But what I was saying about the honey before you took us to Propolis Town was that um, <laughs> I made Amanda... Population. <laughs> B for three. Okay, so um, Amanda, I made her a coffee this morning. Thank you. And I put... Um, that's the first thank you I got for the coffee. Um, it's actually the second. I said it earlier. Okay. When said it. <laughs> so brought it, made it with Manuka honey. And I brought it to him and I'm like, I made this with Manuka honey. I hope you enjoy it. And Amanda said, Manuka honey doesn't, you when you put it in Don't hot wake water. up people. This is the part of the podcast where people are hopefully asleep. Okay. So doing a very animated impression of me is not recommended. Amanda said. By my doctorly advice. When you put honey in... Sounds just like me, an exact likeness. When you put honey in coffee, I'm trying to be calm like you, like trying to do a calm version of you. When you mm -hmm. put honey in hot water what or hot to my beverage, nose in this impression. When you put honey in hot beverages, you lose all the properties of the honey. The I said you shouldn't cook honey. I, I put it in a coffee. I didn't cook it. Well, the coffee's hot though. When you pour the coffee directly on it. Mm. I said to her, but wait a second, what are you talking about? Honey in tea has been a thing that people have done for years. It doesn't lose its beneficial properties. It still remains soothing. Honey mm -hmm. in any form remains soothing. Mm -hmm. However, part of the properties of Manuka honey, and I could be very wrong here, but I believe are the unpasteurized form of it. Once you pasteurize anything, you're getting all the natural stuff out of it, which is a good thing in a lot of cases because it takes, you know, like in milk, for example, there's a reason we pasteurize milk. However, 
with honey, you want it in its raw form, do you not? Especially when you're having it for any type of um, help with immunity or whatever. So any honey in any form, pasteurized or not, could be soothing. But all I'm saying is if you put scalding hot coffee on it, it could maybe reduce some of the properties. Perhaps. I'm not sure. Okay. Bagged milk. Fair enough. Fair enough. Like I said before, don't take any medical or nutritional advice from us on this podcast. Propolis, musk melons, watermelons, papaya seeds. What else have we covered? This is this is what happens when I don't plan ahead our our topic because I just didn't have the mental capacity to do so today. I like how you phrase that. Mm -hmm. When we don't when I don't plan ahead our topic. That's your mom would do that turn of phrase. And yet Amanda doesn't seem to plan for any topics for the podcast, but yet has no problems. <laughs> no, I liked, I, I like it. I like when you phrase things like that. Okay. It, it, your mom does it and I really like it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You're, you're looking at me not happily, but. Well, it didn't sound very nice, but no, I can listen it, back. No, all I mean is it's a turn of phrase. It's a, I think it's, it comes from how you would say it in Italian. No, not everything about my life comes from my Italian background. Sometimes I just like to speak. The way I speak. Not everything in life in your life comes from your Italian background because I'm in your life, but everything else beyond me, mm, I think, does. I don't know about that, folks. I mean, you're you're offending my British sensibilities. That's fair. Um, my friend Nima, our friend Nima, said that uh, he was talking with a woman who referred to her credit card as a plastic plate. Have you ever heard that? Never. Yeah. What? Put it on the plastic plate. Plastic plate. Yeah. I guess that's an old. Was she British? No, she was just old. (laughs) Not everybody who speaks weirdly is British, Amanda. Well, I just try to find out where things come from. We're going to get a lot of letters from that. I know. Because I grew up saying the rubbish barrel. Oh, did you? Yeah. Did you not know that? Have you ever heard my parents say that? The rubbish barrel? We wouldn't say the garbage. Why would you have a barrel for your rubbish? The garbage bin? Rubbish bin. Well, we don't say that. But you said said rubbish rubbish barrel. barrel. Listen, I don't know. That's Did you guys have an actual barrel that you would put trash in? We had a barrel, but not for that. My mom liked barrels. She was going through like a barrel phase. What did she use the <laughs> barrels for? We had a wishing well in front of our house. Did you know that? A I fake think you one. Don't, yeah, okay. But what? We, we, don't try to get away from the barrel <laughs> topic. We need to know. I remember there were barrels in our garage. For what? I don't know. My grandfather made them, I think. But what was inside the barrels? I don't know. I didn't ask. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad this isn't a true, true, you true guys crime barrels. podcast. You not have Yeah, because we had wine. We you would make wine, wine yeah. in them. Yeah, we, we used them for the purposes that they served. Yeah, I don't think we ever did that. Okay. My goodness, the things you learn when you do a podcast with your spouse. <laughs> Rubbish barrel. Anyway, I'm just saying we had different turns of phrases. Pocketbook is a great one. Mm-hmm. As an American, I grew up saying my pocketbook, which in Canada would translate to purse. Right. Yeah. But a lot of people don't realize that that's what a pocketbook is. Oh, another one. I was talking to somebody about this recently. Cocoa. We would say have a cup of cocoa. But here you would say hot chocolate. Right. A lot of people are like, oh, are you saying that cocoa is the same as hot chocolate? They thought it was a type of hot chocolate. Right. With cocoa or whatever. But they're the same. Fair. So there you go. You're welcome for decoding these hot topics like pocketbook versus purse. I told Nima that sometimes I'll say blower for the phone because we heard Martin <laughs> yeah. Short talk about his agent who used to say, I'll get on the blower and call them. And it made me laugh. And now... Was it Martin Short? It was Martin Short. I think... Yeah. No, no, it was David Sedaris. Oh, it was David it was Sedaris. David Sedaris okay. talking about... A, he had a writing agent that was old and he would say things like, let me just get on the blower. <laughs> <laughs> it's so new. And every now and then we'll hear someone say that, get on the blower. Yeah. I, I try to incorporate that into my my speech when I talk about the phone, get on the blower, because I just think it sounds so funny. Here's something I learned this week. What's that? Speaking of old things, or are we out of time? No, we're we're getting there, but you have time. Um, I didn't know. We learned this playing a board. We had a board game night with our very good friends. And their kids, who are so wonderful. Kids who are not kids anymore. They're both in, they're both adults. They're both in grad school. So they're both like definitely adults. Mm -hmm. Um, Anyway, they're awesome. And they made some time to Play board games with us. How sweet is that? Yeah. Two kids in grad school. Anyway, um, I learned that I thought um, things went into public domain a-, a hundred years after the thing was created, but it isn't. It's a hundred years after that person passes. I didn't know that. I think it's 50 years. No, it's a hundred. 
I thought it was 70 years in Canada, 50 years in the U.S. Mm, okay. I don't know any of these things now. Well, it's something you should look up. Not you, Amanda. Should you, I? The, no. I'm Do you sorry. want me to? Lo- sure, I'm look, it, look up. it up. Oh, right now. If you're looking for things that are in the public domain. Oh, I want to share this with our listeners. Mm-hmm. I had I had said to everyone that I was going to start reading Agatha Christie books mm-hmm. in the order they were published. And? Well, I'm on book four, and okay. I'm very, very happy. Yeah, how's it going? Well, book four, I got from the, I got all the books from the library, and book four is large print. <laughs> it's happened, folks. And, you know, I didn't realize, but it's large print, and I'm really enjoying reading large print. It's like the novel's being kind of yelled at me a little bit, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm reading it with uh, more intensity, but also what I like about large print, and I don't need to read large print yet, but certainly in darker places, dimmer, dimmer lit places, dimly lit places, it's much easier to read the large print. So okay. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm learning enjoying... a lot about public domain. Okay, now. here we go. There's a thing called perpetual copyright. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I want this show to be... Some works never fully lapse into public domain. In the United Kingdom, for example, there's perpetual crown copyright for the King James Version of the Bible. Did you know that? No, I, I did know. not know that. Um, uh, like J.M. Barry's work, so Peter Pan... Oh, that's in perpetual... Uh... We're granted special exception oh. that require royalties to be paid for commercial performances. Interesting. Oh, as long as it goes to the a hospital. Okay. So Barry granted the copyright to this hospital. That's, that's wonderful. Lovely. That's really lovely. Goodness. But you're right. Most countries, it's 70 years. After the person who has passed, passed on. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Well, there. I've learned something today, and I've given out a lot of wrong information, I think. If so you have we any, all win. If you have any um, corrections you'd like us to make <laughs> based on this episode. I'm only doing it. I'm, this is my version of, uh, you know, um, thirst. What are those called? Thirst photos? What are those called? Thirst trap. I don't even know what that is. You know what a thirst trap is? No. A thirst trap, and you and I both know someone who does this. A thirst trap is like... They, they post like really like scantily hot photos of themselves oh. for likes. Oh. Yeah, it's called a thirst trap. Should we do that for the Insomnia Project? Oh <laughs> Our thirst trap photo. We need a wind machine and some bikinis. Oh my goodness. I well, can't imagine. I'll put one on if you put one on. Nope. Okay. I mean, well, I have, I don't know. I might have one. I don't know. It's not going to be pretty. Do you have the beehive um, the bikini? Bee- you need to explain why you call it a beehive. <laughs> it's not made of propolis. Because it's like the top is black and the bottom is yellow or something like that. And how did I get that bikini? You were like, I want to be a bee on the beach. And you went and you searched. I can't remember. We were no, somewhere. We where were you... somewhere and they didn't. They had a pool and I didn't have a bathing suit. So I went across to Walmart and got that. I, I actually don't remember where it was. It was somewhere with Daniela Vlascala because Daniela Vlascala yes, called you Queen Bee. That's right. I think Ottawa then. Okay, there you go. Yeah, because that was the last time we were with them. So, yeah. Best place to buy your bikinis. Auto. <laughs> and we'll leave you with that. Thank you for listening to our podcast. I know it was a bit silly today. Um, As but opposed to the hard-hitting <laughs> once we usually do. we usually do. Until next time, we hope this podcast brought a smile to your face at the very least. I don't know if it got you to sleep, but if it did, even all the more better. Till next time. You're wondering why you're dreaming of papaya seeds. I hope you were able to listen and sleep.